Live from KSAT 12. HR Burt's timeline is emerging morning, surrounding the aid to Ukraine as right new emails now. have been released. I'm ABC's Serena Marshall with what happened just 90 minutes after the phone call between the two presidents. And outside with live cam, looking great downtown right now. Folks doing that last minute travel, trying to get to their Christmas destinations. We'll take a look at weather here and around the country with Sarah Spivey coming up. Good morning to you. It is Monday. It is December 23rd. Thank you for being with us this morning, everybody. Welcome to your Monday. A little bit chilly out there this morning. You definitely need to grab a coat. Let's check in now with Sarah, who is in for Mike and an early Merry Christmas Good morning, to you. Sarah. Early Merry Christmas. What a nice Christmas present to be here with you guys. We're happy to have you. It is nice and chilly outside. Yesterday we saw some frost on the ground. I wouldn't be surprised if a couple more places see some frost, especially up in the hill country, but it is cold outside. Take a look outside right now. 37 degrees at the airport. Winds are kind of uh, variable. They're going between about zero and th five miles per hour. So currently at the moment we don't have a wind chill, but it's chilly enough in my opinion. Dew points are pretty close to the temperatures. So again, that's why I think we could have some frost, especially up where temperatures are below freezing. Look out toward Bulverde, Bernie Stage Airfield, Rio Medina, and down to Hondo. Places northwest of that, anywhere you see this pink color, that's where the freezing line is. It's 30 in Comfort, 31 in Kerrville, 31 in Bandera, 35 at JBSA Randolph, and 35 at Stenson. But today, we're going to warm up nicely. How does 70 degrees sound? Cool and sunny uh, during the afternoon will be warming up. Uh, light and variable winds, and then this evening we will cool down quickly. Hey, if you want to go out and look at Christmas lights tonight, make sure to bring that jacket with you because, again, we'll be cooling down pretty quickly. And it is a big travel day across the state of Texas. So let's go ahead and check in with Nick, who has a look at Time Saver Traffic. Nick? Thanks, Sarah, and well, good morning, everyone. It's great to be here on a Monday morning. So right now we had one disabled vehicle in the eastbound lanes of I-10, but it just cleared up right now, so that's very good news for everybody. So the traffic are, the traffic is looking great. No major accidents out there. This is where that disabled vehicle was. A pedestrian is walking on the road. That is all cleared up now. Here it was, UTSA. The flare lines are still there, so if you see those flare lines, it's okay if you're going eastbound I-10. The roadways are open. Taking a look at other places in the city, 35 and 37 is looking great. Great. Uh, 90 in Journal McMullen is looking good. And 10 at Probant is looking great as well. Well, I hope everyone has a great morning. Mark, Leslie. Do this morning, a home destroyed after a fire broke out in southeast Bear County. Firefighters say when they got to scene just before 2 this morning, the home was 80% covered in flames. A car also caught fire. This was in the 4800 block of Hardy Road. Three people were inside at the time. They got out safely. It's not clear yet what started that fire. Two suspects have now been arrested after that shooting at South Park Mall last week. 21-year-old Lawrence Rather Frams and 22-year-old Deontay Johnson were taken into custody last night. Both men were picked up on the southeast side and both are saying they are innocent. Frams and Johnson are facing four counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. They're accused of shooting three men and a woman ages 17 to 41 at South Park Mall before driving off. All of the victims were taken to the hospital at last check. One was still in critical condition. Now to the latest in the impeachment of President Trump. Newly released documents reveal that just 90 minutes after the infamous phone call with Ukraine, the Pentagon was ordered to suspend military aid and to keep the move quiet. Documents released following a court order as part of the Freedom of Information Act request by the Center for Public Integrity. ABC Serena Marshall is in Washington with details. As Republicans and Democrats continue to spar over impeachment. They had to rush to uh, this impeachment vote and then all of a sudden she's sitting on it. If he really believes it's thin, it's thin because the president of the United States ordered his top people who were in the room who know have firsthand knowledge not to testify. New details from new emails filling in the timeline of events surrounding the freezing of nearly $400 million in military aid to Ukraine. Just 91 minutes after the now infamous phone call between President Trump and Ukraine's president, Michael Duffy, a senior official with the Office of Management and Budget, emailed the Pentagon to please hold off on that funding to Ukraine, requesting they keep it quiet, given the sensitive nature of the request. The 146 pages of heavily redacted emails also shows the president first inquiring about the aid weeks prior, and they were obtained by the Center for Public Integrity following a federal judge's ruling, not by Congress, which the White House continues to refuse to cooperate with. But Duffy is one of the four witnesses who Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer has said he wants to hear from during the Senate trial. 
This email is explosive. On the campaign trail, though, impeachment not part of the candidate's case. Mr. Vice President, can we ask you one question about it? Vice President, Mr. Vice President, one question on impeachment. Making a final pre-holiday blitz through the Hawkeye State with the caucus just weeks away, voters lining up to see the South Bend mayor. This will be the third event that I've been to. and. Um, just want to hear some more of what he has to say. As the candidates vie for their party's nomination to take on President Trump here in Washington, the impeachment battle continues to be at a standstill. Lawmakers are out on recess, and the majority and minority leader continue to be at a stalemate over witnesses. Serena Marshall, ABC News, Washington. The U.S. military says an American service member has been killed in action in Afghanistan. The statement didn't provide further details or identify the soldier or say where in Afghanistan he was killed. However, the Taliban said it was behind the roadside bombing in northern Kanduz province that killed the American soldier. The soldier's death brings the number of U.S. soldiers' deaths in Afghanistan this year to 20. There have also been three non-combat-related deaths this year. 436, 37 degrees. A little girl asked Santa for a special Christmas present, a new heart for her mom. How her belief in the magic of St. Nick rather was strengthened. Outside with live cam, we'll get the ball rolling on this Christmas Eve Eve Monday morning. Glad you're with us here on GMSA. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. It's now 439. A Connecticut school resource officer is speaking out for the first time since stopping a runaway SUV that was heading towards a group of students. It's your GMA first look. In this morning's GMA First Look, a police officer from Connecticut is being hailed a hero after single-handedly stopping a moving SUV from colliding with a group of teenagers. Watch as Officer Carlos Carmo Jr. notices the driverless car with two people still inside and sprints toward the moving vehicle. You can see him grab hold of the truck and bring it to a halt by dragging his feet on the street. That brave officer spoke exclusively to ABC News about the harrowing incident. I was just thinking in my mind, just like, I, I got to find a way to stop this. Watch again. You can see dozens of young people on the sidewalk, unaware they were in harm's way. They all had headphones on and I was screaming at them. They basically didn't even, didn't even hear me. I don't even think they knew what was going on until it was over. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have exclusive details from that brave police officer. With your GMA First Look, I'm Lindsay Davis, ABC News, New York. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The Dallas Cowboys blew their chance to win the NFC East after losing to the Philadelphia Eagles Sunday. Dallas's Dak Prescott played through an injured shoulder and threw for 265 yards, but his final attempt of the game was busted up in the end zone by Eagles cornerback Sidney Jones. With that, the Cowboys fell to Philly 17-9 Sunday. This is the second game of the season where the Cowboys failed to score a single touchdown. Cowboys slipped to second in the NFC East standings. They'll take on the Redskins Sunday afternoon, kick off 325 in Arlington. Houston Texans had a good weekend. The Texans are AFC South champions for the fourth time in five years. They clinched the division by beating the Buccaneers 23-20 Saturday. Texans offense faced the number one rush defense in the league and managed only 68 yards on the ground but still scored a touchdown. The 10-5 Texans win uh, despite a uh, rather, the 10 and 5 Texans won despite a shaky performance from Deshaun Watson, who completed 19 of 32 for 184 yards and one pick. Texans will play the Tennessee Titans Sunday afternoon at 325 in Houston as the regular season is coming to a close. 441, 37 degrees. A child in New York is thankful to Santa after her Christmas wish came true. Why she and her family have a whole lot to be grateful for. And it was an instant classic. Eddie Murphy returned to the SNL stage over the weekend. We'll take a look at some of his classic characters brought back in the spotlight. This SA Salute Holiday Greeting is brought to you by Broadway Bank. Hi, I'm Kim Machad from Broadway Bank, and I'd like to send a special holiday greeting to all of our men and women serving in our armed forces. Thank you for all that you do. I'd like to spend, send a special greeting to my nephew, Petty Officer 3rd Class Tim Mashad, currently serving in the U.S. Navy on, aboard the USSS Nimitz. Happy Holidays. 444, writing letters to Santa is a Christmas tradition for many families, but unfortunately Santa cannot respond to every single letter he receives. That's why San Antonio Business is providing its services to help old St. Nick. 
Gino's Deli has transformed into a mail delivery service for Santa's letters. The restaurant has a little red mailbox where both kids and adults can leave their letters for Santa. So far, owners of the restaurant have received 500 letters. They respond to every single one with a personalized message. I feel that I'm doing something constructive for the community, for the city and stuff, you know, and I feel fulfilled. Still some time if your little one wants to mail their letter to Santa from Geno's. Today's the last day. Find in more information on ksat.com. A little girl in upstate New York has a new reason to believe in Santa this Christmas. When she got the chance to tell him what she wanted for Christmas, she didn't miss her chance to help her mom get a new heart. ABC's Tom Yamas reports. If you have any doubts about Santa Claus, there's a little girl in upstate New York Santa Claus. who now has proof about the magic of Christmas. And when Santa Claus asked what they wanted for Christmas, Sophie said that she wanted for my mom to get a heart from the doctors before she said what she wanted. It's hard for even Sophie's mom to tell this story. Her little girl asking Santa not for a toy, but for help. Mom needed a new heart. It was terrifying being in the hospital, just waiting. The 37-year-old mother of four was diagnosed with a rare heart condition. In dire shape around the holidays, she was airlifted to the University of Rochester Medical Center. She needed a life-saving heart transplant, but they told her she was going to have to wait. Some in the family started to lose hope, but not little Sophie. She even told her grandmother not to worry. She wants a heart for mommy. And she goes, we'll all get what we want for Christmas. She goes, Santa Claus is going to bring them to us, she says. And soon after that Christmas wish. That's when the doctors came in and said that they, by the grace of God, they had a heart for her. The surgery a success. <laughs> and here's the moment after spending weeks apart, the family finally reunited. And Sophie wasn't done asking Santa for gifts. Yeah, and they want markers. Markers too. Christmas came early for this family, which can only mean one thing. Little Sophie is clearly on the nice list. Something like this really puts it into perspective that it's not about presents. It's about being with your family, and your loved ones. That was ABC's Tom Yamas reporting. Producers, you're killing me. <laughs> Let's go to uh, Nick right now, see how things are looking on the roads. That was a great story, everyone. But roads are looking great right now. There's no accidents. The UTSA, a disabled vehicle, is out the roadway. Things are looking great if you're traveling this morning on the holiday season. Uh, let's take a look at some drive times. Eastbound Bandera to I-10, five minutes. Westbound Bandera Road to 151 is also five minutes. And let's look, northeast side of 1604 to downtown, 12 minutes. And the southwest side of 1604 to downtown is 12 minutes as well. That's a very good commute right there. Uh, let's take a look outside at some places in the city. 10 and Hebner looking great. 35 and 37 looking awesome. And uh, 1604 military. Uh, very, very little cars on the roadway. So if you're traveling right now, expect a smooth ride. One of the most smooth. oddly lit highways around For town, sure. up, upper and, <laughs> and lower. Yeah, definitely. Even the bats are going, hey, can you turn the light off? We want to go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nick, thank you very much. No problem, Mark. So it's cold to start out, but it's going to start yeah. warming up, right? It is. It is. In fact, we're near 70 degrees today, guys. And wow. we'll, we'll continue with the 70s through Christmas. So... No, nope. okay. That's good weather. That's perfect weather for riding bikes that you got from Santa and all it that is, stuff. It is perfect weather for that. Now, if you were hoping for a white Christmas, we have never had a white Christmas in San Antonio. True. So we, just, we have it. It's not going to happen. But it is going to be beautiful. Good there. You sure. got sleeve weather for Christmas. Let's go ahead and take a look, though, outside. You can see uh, that uh, it's, it's relatively clear out there. It's a little bit warmer than it was as we started off the day yesterday, but it's still cold outside. 37 degrees is cold in my book. Uh, and dew points are near freezing. So uh, dew points and the temperatures are pretty close. Up in the hill country, the dew point is now the frost point because it's below freezing. And we are going to see frost uh, for some places up in the hill country this morning. So so you can send in your frost pictures 
At least it'll look a little bit more like Christmas this morning with some areas of frost. Take a look up at Bulverde, 31 degrees. You can see very clearly where the freezing line is from Bulverde down to Bernie Stage, Rio Medina, and out toward Hondo. Places northwest of that are below freezing with the exception of Lost Maples. It's 30 in Comfort, not very comfortable. 29 in Kerrville, 34 at Floresville, and 35 at Stinson. We are starting to see some areas of patchy fog out there this morning. Visibility is down to about six miles at Stinson, but you'll remember Saturday morning was very foggy, so this is going to be quite the improvement. We're not expecting uh, widespread dense fog this morning as compared to the weekend. Now in the high res future cast, you can see clear skies. That's going to allow our temperatures to warm up to near 70 degrees this afternoon from downtown to Leon Springs to New Braunfels to Seguin down to Lavernia will all be near 70 and then we'll cool off quickly tonight by the start of Christmas Eve morning. We'll be near uh, 40 degrees with high uh, with morning lows probably back in the 30s as well. So let's break it down for you for Monday's forecast. It's chilly this morning. It'll stay chilly through about the mid morning hours and then it'll be nice and comfy right around lunch. If you want to have your lunch outdoors, 65 degrees light and variable winds and then in the afternoon going for a high of 70 degrees, which isn't too out of the ordinary here uh, around this time of year. It is definitely warmer than average though, and we'll cool down pretty quickly this evening. Elf on the shelf. A lot of us uh, enjoy elf on the shelf this time of year. We're running down the last couple of nights to put him out there and to see where he goes the next morning. So this evening, make sure he has a warm place to be because we'll be in the 40s with light and variable winds and it'll be chilly and clear this evening. Great for looking at Christmas lights too. Let's go ahead and take a look at your travel forecast across the state of Texas. It'll be mild and sunny, so we won't really have any problems on the roadways apart from the traffic uh, as far as the weather goes. Uh, but there's going to be a big snowstorm working its way across the Rockies with some heavy rain out toward California. So that could cause some problems uh, in the air. There could be quite a few delays, not just because it's a busy travel week, but also because of the uh, weather conditions. But again, here in San Antonio, across the state of Texas, if you're traveling uh, by the roadways, you should be just fine because we're going to stay mild and sunny. Let's take a look at Christmas. Uh, get down to the nitty gritty. Christmas Eve tomorrow morning, we'll be waking up near 39. In the afternoon, 72, mostly sunny skies. A beautiful day tomorrow. A little bit on the warmer side. Christmas Day is going to be interesting. You know that song, then one foggy Christmas Eve. We may actually see some fog Christmas Eve into Christmas Day in the morning hours. So Rudolph, he'll be put to good use. 72 degrees for the high on Christmas Day. And then taking a look at the next seven days, I do just want to mention that there is going to be a better chance for rain as we head into the weekend with temperatures uh, going up into the 60s for us. Uh, we're going down rather into the 60s with chances for ice isolated showers on Saturday and Sunday. Two observations from your forecast. Okay. First is the elf looks like Justin. He can't. I can see that. I, know, I really does, can right? see that. Yeah, it totally does. And the uh, that gold Christmas tree in the background. Isn't your graphics. Pretty? So pretty. Gorgeous. We got some new graphics from nice. our company. Thank you, company. <laughs> That's awesome. That's beautiful. Thank you, Santa and the company. <laughs> and right, the company. And the company. I, uh, right now, we are going to do this. We're going to take a look at your lottery numbers <laughs> at 453. Your pick three numbers, 172, <laughs> Fireball 4, Daily 4, 2359, Fireball 0. And your catch five numbers are 3910, 2324. Lotto 7, 21, 24, 37, 44, 45. Powerball 19, 31, 35, 50, 67. Powerball 14 and a power play of two. Four fifty six latest Star Wars movie dominated the box office this weekend, but maybe not quite as much as many had predicted. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Christopher Watson. Taking one last look, sir. There was never any question that Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker's opening would dominate the box office, only by how much. It earned at least $179 million over the weekend. That's on the lower end of expectations, but the final chapter of the Skywalker saga still scored the third best December opening ever. The meaning of what Only 6.5 million bucks for the critically savaged cats, a third of what was forecast, making it the year's final flop. Eddie Murphy brought back four of his classic characters when he returned to host Saturday Night Live after 35 years away. There was Mr. Robinson, Buckwheat, Velvet Jones, and a special weekend update guest. I am Gumby. I am Gumby. I am Gumby. <laughs> 
the way, the Rise of Skywalker star Adam Driver will host the first SNL of the new year, January 25th, his third time as host. And happy birthday to Pearl Jam frontman Eddie Vedder. He's 55 today. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Christopher Watson, ABC News. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Three people need a new place to live after their home was destroyed by flames. We have a look at the destruction left behind this morning. It doesn't feel like Christmas in our area, but other parts of the country are dealing with some wicked winter weather. The havoc Mother Nature is sparking across the country. Over a week now, we've been talking about a trend that could lead to warmer weather hitting, heading into Christmas Day. Is that still the case? We'll check in with meteorologist Sarah Spivey. And a good morning to you. It is Monday. It is December 23rd. Did you notice heavier traffic this morning? I did. Yeah, I think people are traveling. We'll get to traffic and weather in just a moment. Uh, but first, we have some breaking news on the east side to tell you about. Police are investigating a shooting in the 2700 block of East Commerce Street. And that's where our Katrina Weber is right now. So, Katrina, what's the latest? Fatal shooting, a man killed in an apartment here in the 2700 block of East Commerce. You can see that the street is all blocked up. Police have been working in and around uh, an apartment just down the street there. They say that there were at least a couple of people in the apartment. Uh, that would be the shooter and the man who got killed. They got into some sort of an argument right before 3 o'clock this morning. Uh, it's a man in his early 30s who was shot and killed. The suspect did leave this location, but officers did find him at another home. We're told about two miles from here. They took that man into custody. He's in his early 20s. Police still trying to sort out what this was all about, but they say that neither one of them lived here, but they were visiting someone else who does live here. Uh, and so it's possible police are talking to that third person, maybe as a witness, we don't know, but they are still trying to get to the bottom of what led to this and why it turned into a deadly shooting. Reporting live on the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. All right, let's talk about your forecast. We have Sarah Spivey in this morning, and it isn't a cold start to the Monday morning. Oh, it's nice and chilly. You know, we had a little bit of frost on the ground yesterday. I think we could see a little bit of frost, especially in the higher elevations this morning, too, because temperatures around San Antonio are below freezing, especially up in the hill country. It's 32 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 31 in Hondo, 29 in Kerrville. Here at San Antonio, it's 37, but you look down towards Stinson, awfully close to freezing at 31, uh, pardon me, 33, and it's 31 in Pleasanton. Now ahead in the forecast, we'll talk about this frosty morning. Beautiful warm afternoon, near 70 degrees. And of course, we'll also have to talk about that warm trend into Christmas, at least by a few degrees. But before we do that, I did want to talk about uh, airline and airport delays. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. You can see that there's a big system uh, working its way across the southeastern tier of the United States near Atlanta, Georgia, getting some heavy rain at the moment down to Florida. Of course, we all know that Atlanta is a big hub airport, so we'll keep an eye on that. But as of now, uh, this early in the morning, no real airport delays to speak of even across the state of Texas. Texas. All the local airports are looking great, but of course I'll be checking on this throughout the morning and I'll have a look at your Christmas forecast coming up. But for now, let's go ahead and check on road conditions with Nick. Nick. Thanks, Sarah. Oh, I hope everyone's having a great Monday morning out there. A lot of green, as you can see, so that's always good on a Monday morning, especially for the holidays. Let's take a look. We have one major accident that just came out on the west side, northwest side of San Antonio, Arcadia Creek and Calabria Road. This came in as a hit and run accident. Um, I'm sure it'll be the, the accident will be gone by the time rush hour traffic hits, but it is there. If you were leaving to work this early, just be careful there at that intersection. There is still an active scene. Uh, let's see some drive times here. New Braunfels is 1604, 15 minutes. Loop 1604 to downtown, 12 minutes. That's pretty good for this time of day right now. Taking a look outside, 1604 Military Drive looking good uh, on the northwest side of town. So we're still looking great on the roadways. Leslie, Mark, back to you. Thank you very much, Nick. New this morning, a home is destroyed by fire. And this is in southeast Bear County. Firefighters say when they arrived at the scene just before 2 this morning, the home was 80% covered in flames. A car also caught fire. This was in the 4800 block of Hardy Road. Three people were inside the home at the time, but they did get out safely. It's not clear yet what started that fire. 
Several Democratic candidates for president will be on the campaign trail today. Amy Klobuchar, Cory Booker, Pete Buttigieg, and Michael Bennett. Uh, Senate, you may, uh, Senator, rather, you may not have heard of that often from Colorado, will be in Iowa with just a few weeks to go until the state caucus on February 3rd. Deval Patrick and Tom Steyer will be campaigning in New Hampshire, where the first primary of the 2020 election will be held coming up on February 11th. Millions are expected to travel over the holidays. Goes without saying, and the winter weather is making for some treacherous conditions. Here's ABC's Kenneth Moten with details. All along the East Coast, dangerous wintry weather is taking its toll as a record number of Americans hit the roads, headed to their holiday destinations. A nearly 70-car pileup amid dense fog on this icy Virginia highway. More than 50 people sent to the hospital, some critically injured, but reportedly no fatalities. More than 100 million Americans expected to travel through the end of the year, with the worst day on the roads still to come, the day after Christmas. Watch out, watch out! Watch out. In New York City, it's not so much the driving that's a problem, but just walking or skateboarding down the street can be dangerous. If you do not live in 240, the street is closed. Pedestrians running for cover, shielding their kids, some using umbrellas for protection. About that big? Yeah. Maybe like a meter square? Parked cars damaged as ice came crashing down. It sounded like a fender bear, two cars crashing. Oh. And when I looked, you saw a shattered ice on the floor and the hood of the, the car was dented. In Washington state, a young officer killed, weather possibly to blame for the crash. He hit uh, probably some water and hydroplane. His patrol car went off the road and flipped and for some reason barrel rolled and caught on fire. In Southern California, a pair of empty buses caught fire, creating havoc for travelers at LAX. Just as we head into the holiday week, a storm system is expected to continue dumping heavy rains on parts of the West Coast. And much of the Southeast could also see heavy rain and strong winds as a system moves in along the Gulf Coast. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. Christmas fast approaching for anyone who hasn't already shipped those holiday gifts to friends and family. You're cutting it close. U.S. Postal Service says today is the deadline if you want to be certain those packages are going to be under the tree by Christmas. However, you will have to choose the post office's priority mail express service. Multiple shops hit by crooks over the weekend. The owner of one store says those thieves won't put a dampen on his holiday spirit. The owner of Delice Chocolatier says they still plan to finish over 100 orders in time for Christmas. Or is that delish? I don't know, I haven't heard of it. But anyway, the suspect who hit the store only made off of $55. The person broke part of the front window, though, and repairing that is going to cost the owners $800. Our hearts and our uh, door may be broken, but not not as our spirit. We will be fine, and and we will keep on baking and try to make San Antonio a sweeter place. The owner says it's the second time his business was broken into, and I think it's Delice is what they're saying. Chocolatier. Thank you, ma'am. 507, 37 degrees. Twitter has a warning for Android app users with the company is telling them to do after it found a vulnerability. That's coming up in Tech Bytes. Santa forecast coming up. We get one day closer to the Christmas holiday. Downtown San Antonio lit up in red and green for the holiday. We'll be right back. Welcome back. It's 11 minutes after 5. A new study finds a link between babies getting antibiotics and developing allergies later in life. Researchers discovered children who take antibiotics before turning 6 months old are more likely to develop food allergies, asthma, or dermatitis. The correlation was found in a wide range of antibiotics. Scientists believe it may be due to how antibiotics affect gut bacteria. It should be noted the study does not prove antibiotics cause allergies. It's possible children at increased risk of developing them are also more susceptible to bacterial infections requiring antibiotics. It's now 11 minutes past the hour, 37 degrees. Here's what's coming up. I think uh, this story, Motorola is delaying the uh, release of their popular Razer phone due to its popularity. Oh. Also, high tech strikes again. Kids ordering presents for themselves through Alexa and other gadgets. 
how you can guard against unwanted presence coming up in Tech Bites. And Trans Guide. Traffic is going to be unusual for the next couple of days. Some areas this can be super busy as folks head out. Others, you can tell that folks are going to be off for the rest of the Christmas week. They're 1604 at Hausman. Nick is here. He'll get us updated coming up. Does scrubbing grease feel like a workout? Scrub less with Dawn Ultra. Its superior grease cleaning formula gets to work faster, making easy work of tough messes. Dawn is a go-to grease cleaner throughout the kitchen too. Keep a bottle in the laundry room to pre-treat greasy stains. And keep Dawn in the garage to lift grease off car rims. It's even gentle enough to clean wildlife affected by oil. Dawn's grease cleaning power takes care of tough grease wherever it shows up. Scrub less, save more with Dawn. Pain thinks it makes the rules, but the rules just changed. New Icy Hot Lidocaine Dry Spray. Instant dry technology. No mess, no residue, fast acting relief. Rise from pain. New Icy Hot Lidocaine Dry Spray. <laughs> What's going on? I got you something. Oh, wow. Did you get things from here, Juan? I did. I got you. Oh, everything. That's beautiful. I got your car. I mean, look. Get up to 40% off all Christmas, now at Pier 1. Mom, did you see the acorn? 515 millions of Twitter users might want to take some action to keep their accounts secure. ABC's Tony Collins and Kenneth Moten have that and more in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, Twitter security. If you use Twitter's Android app, you should update to the latest version. Twitter confirmed a vulnerability that could let hackers see users' account information and actually send tweets. The company says it's been fixed, but suggests users do that update. And Motorola is delaying the release of its new Razer phone. It was supposed to be available for pre-order the day after Christmas and launch next month, but that's reportedly being delayed because of high demand. Motorola says the delay won't be significant. Finally, is Alexis replacing Santa? There are plenty of reports of gifts arriving at home thanks to kids ordering them through voice assistance or other devices. To guard against unwanted purchases through Alexa, parents can set a pin or turn off voice purchasing from Amazon. Those kids, they're so mm -hmm. smart. And those are your tech bags. Alexa is the new Santa. <laughs> Have a great day. Yeah, if you haven't turned off voice purchasing on your Alexa by now, it's too late. And way too late. That would be just not good. It, I, it would be kind of funny, though, to see what shows up. Or scary. Mm -hmm. And to see your credit card bill. That's also true. Let's check on the roadways. I noticed increased traffic flow definitely this morning. Yeah, Leslie, there's definitely a lot more cars for this early in the morning, but traffic is still flowing pretty good, so that's always a good sign, especially on Monday. A lot of green out there right now. SABD still on scene working at this accident on Culebra Road and Arcadia Creek. It's still active there. Just be careful if you live in that neighborhood and you see that accident. Be careful with those first responders. Uh, looking at the time stay for traffic, eastbound Highway 151 to 1604, 10 minutes, and eastbound 90 to 1604 to IH35 is 11 minutes, so still looking great on those travel times on the northwest side of town over there. Let's take a look at the Trans Guide. Other places, 90 in General McMullen, no traffic, 37 in Hackberry, uh, looking great there too, and uh, 35 and 37 starting to pick up as well, and 10 in UTSA, a uh, little bit more, like Leslie was saying, a little bit more traffic for or cars and vehicles on the roadways for this time of the morning. Thank you, Nick. Sarah Spivey, two days till Christmas. Hi, Are you ready? No, I am ready. I'm actually having Christmas. Well, I'm, I'll be here working, but in the morning I'll be heading up to Austin. Oh, so fun. yeah, we're gonna have a good time. I've never spent Christmas in Austin, so it's, we'll see how it goes. Well, it'll probably be a lot like here weather-wise. It definitely will be. I think maybe only a degree or two difference. Yes. Uh, temperatures are gonna be on the warmer side, especially during Christmas afternoon, near 72 degrees, guys. Oh, but <laughs> hey, we at least get these chilly mornings to make it feel a little bit like Christmas. It is uh, anywhere you see that pink, that's below freezing. So up at Bernie State Airfield. It's below freezing, just barely. 31 up in Bulverde, 30 in Comfort, 29 in Kerrville, 30 in Bandera, and 29 in Tarpley, 31 in Hondo. Here in San Antonio, we're sitting pretty at 37 degrees, but I do think temperatures will get awfully close to freezing uh, here in San Antonio. We look down towards Stinson at 33 there, so don't be surprised if you do see some areas of patchy frost. Uh, the temperatures and the dew points are pretty close, uh, and most of those dew points are below freezing, so again, 
frost is going to be possible early this morning. Uh, but today's weather setup is generally quiet across the state of Texas. You can see just some cirrus clouds working their way in from the west, so we might see a little bit of a milky hue to the sky, but generally it's going to be pretty nice for us here in Texas. Different story out across the southeastern tier of the United States. I'm showing you this low pressure system because, yeah, it could cause some problems if you are uh, flying today. It could cause some delays uh, in the airways, but but it's also bringing us much drier air around that low. And so if you're traveling by road across the state of Texas, you're in pretty good shape. This is a look at Texas's travel cast here. If you're going up to Dallas today, the high is going to be 65 degrees, mostly sunny skies. Houston, if you're heading along I-10 East, near 70, a lot like us here. And then down toward Laredo along 35 South, just know that it's going to be much warmer, near 80 degrees down in Laredo today, even warmer tomorrow for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. So for today, just to break it down for you here in San Antonio, we're going to be at 54 right around 10. So temperatures are going to warm up nicely from the 30s and 40s. Already by 10, we'll be in the 50s, 60s by the lunch hour, 70 degrees for the high today, mostly sunny skies. We'll have light and variable winds, and then we'll cool down very quickly tonight. In fact, if you want to go out with your family and look at some Christmas lights, I think you are good to go because temperatures will be cooling down nicely. It'll feel there'll be a little bit of a chill in the air by 10 will be at 50. Uh, so again, get out and enjoy Christmas lights because by this time next week, Christmas will be over, unfortunately. And speaking of Christmas, here's a look at your Christmas forecast. Uh, Christmas Eve will start off at 39 degrees in the morning hours, 72 in the afternoon. Christmas Day is going to be a little interesting because we are going to have areas of morning fog. That morning fog could stick around a little bit, making the first part of Christmas Day kind of gray, but in the afternoon we should be nice near 72 as well. And then taking a look at the seven day forecast, something to keep in mind is although it's going to be nice and sunny through Christmas Day. By Thursday and Friday, things are going to change up for us a little bit. We'll have the chance for some isolated showers and we'll have more clouds than sunshine, unfortunately. Uh, but we definitely need the rain. So if we can eke out a little bit of rain, I would be happy with that. But I just don't think that we're going to see any kind of gully washers anytime soon. We're still experiencing drought conditions in San Antonio, so some rain would be nice, guys. Yeah, it's more like California temperatures for those daytime high temperatures. Oh, hey, I'm not complaining. Oh, you know, no. It's really nice. You can maybe even have your Christmas dinner outside. What, what's, yes. nice. what's your tradition for Christmas dinner? You know what? We usually do ham, uh, I think, really? for Christmas dinner. Yeah. And, of course, uh, we, we just have a good time with family. So. Oh, that's always but this year's going to be a little different, so I'll report back. Okay, <laughs> good. I can't wait to hear about it. What about you? Do you have a tradition for Christmas meal? Um, typically kind of turkeyed out, so I like lean towards ham or prime rib for Christmas Day. You guys? Yeah, we do tenderloin. Yeah. Oh, yummy. Beef tenderloin, I know. It's a fun. Love it. Okay, let's check the time right now. It is 522, 37 degrees. The cast of Rise of Skywalker talk about their director. The criticism received by the movie Cat prompts an unprecedented move. That's all coming up in your spotlight. And here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, one, seven, two, fireball four, De daily four, two, three, five, nine, fireball zero. And your cash five numbers, 3, 9, 10, 23, 24. Your lotto numbers, 7, 21, 24, 37, 44, 45. Saturday's Powerball numbers are 19, 31, 35, 50, 67. 14 is the Powerball and a power play of two. I-25, cast of Rise of Skywalker, open up about the film's director. And in an unprecedented move, an updated version of another new movie is being sent to theaters. CNN's Rick Damagella has those stories and more in your morning spotlight. I saw a rough video, but I can't remember what I jump, I literally am like this, three, two, three, two, three, land on the other bit. Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker has arrived, but leading up to the movie's release, the cast couldn't give away any details about it during press interviews. But they did open up about their director, J.J. Abrams. He was just really having a great time, and obviously God only knows what was going on behind the scenes, but he really seemed like he was having a great time. We were having a great time. They're there to consistently inspire and guide performances in the technical side and he did it with ease. I'm sure, you know, in his, from his perspective, there's probably a lot more challenges and, than that and a lot more details, but in the way he chose to come across, it is quite a, quite a, a, solid, a solid man. What, just what, I mean, I guess I'll see when I'm... What was Carrie Russell's reaction when her friend and Felicity creator Abrams asked her to be in the movie? 
pretty awesome. I mean, he literally sent me an email. I think I was getting coffee. And I was like, is there a no answer? Yes. Like, I'll do whatever you want. I'll do, like, craft service. I choose the cat that deserves a new life. Could it be a second life for cats? The Hollywood Reporter and Daily Variety say Universal Pictures is sending a new version of the movie musical to theaters with, quote, some improved visual effects. The Hollywood Trade Papers reported the unprecedented move after a memo sent by the studio to theater operators was leaked. The movie's runtime is unchanged, according to the memo. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Hey there, good morning. Oh, hi, everybody. Yeah, Hello. It's Monday. It is December 23rd. Which means you have um, one more day, really, get your shopping done? Mm-hmm. This yep. time tomorrow, you're going to be paying it. Hey, and good luck at the grocery stores today. Oh, my oh, goodness. It's going to be, I, I mean, finished. it's the holiday spirit, but still some sort of hand-to-hand -hand combat, depending on the aisle you're in. It will happen. <laughs> yeah. It will happen. Uh, Nick's here with a quick look at uh, time saver traffic on this early, early 23rd. Yeah, it's looking great out there right now. A little traffic's a little bit more moderate for this time of day. I'm thinking it's because of the holiday season, but everything's looking smooth. Yeah, some folks are already off for the week. Yeah, and I, I noticed a lot of cars packed with stuff, which means they're on a holiday trip. Oh, absolutely. And I would caution people because that's when burglars, they really know that you have a lot of stuff in your car. So mm -hmm. be careful this be time of year. Very careful. I think that's good uh, advice. But you know what? The weather is going to cooperate across the state of Texas if you are driving. And the airways a little bit different of a story because there's a couple of big storms working their way across the nation. But here in San Antonio, things are looking just fine for us. Look at that beautiful picture outside oh, right so now. Pretty. The moon smack dab in the middle there of the sky. A nice sliver of a crescent moon there. It is 37 cold degrees outside with a wind chill of freezing. And the reason for that is uh, we've got winds from the north at about 10 miles per hour currently at the moment. But during the day today, they, they should be light and variable. Uh, so a very cold start to the day. You can see it's below freezing uh, in Bulverde, Rio Medina, Hondo. It's 29 in, Com in Kerrville, 30 in Comfort, and 30 in Bandera. Uh, but generally around Bear County, temperatures are just barely above freezing. I do think that as we head uh, closer to sunrise here, temperatures will drop off a couple more degrees and we could actually see some areas of uh, patchy frost around Bear County and definitely in the hill country today. Let's take a look at the forecast. Chilly this morning, 52 by 10, but right around noon will start to warm up pretty nicely. Should be nice and comfortable. 65 this Monday uh, and then 70 for the high temperature. And by the way, it'll be even warmer than this on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. So I've got to look ahead at airport delays. I got to look ahead at what you can expect uh, for Christmas and even into the weekend. There's a small chance for rain, so a lot to unpack in the forecast. I'll have a look at that in a minute. Let's take a look at the roads with uh, Nick Nick. Thanks, Sarah. A lot of green right now on the roadways. Everything's looking very good. But like I said earlier, there is a little bit more moderate traffic right now for this time of morning. Probably people uh, traveling for the holiday season. So just be careful if you are out there. Let's take a look at some drive times right now. Southbound 1604 to downtown, 12 minutes. And the southeast side of 1604 to downtown is 11 minutes. Here we go. Let's see. Uh, City of New Braunfels is 1604, 16, and Loop 1604 to downtown, 12. So those are great times there. Um, oh, we have some more. Eastbound 151, 1604 to Highway 90 is 9, and eastbound 90 to 1604 is 11. Didn't expect that one. Let's take a look outside. 281 at Hildebrand looking really good right now. Not too many cars there. 35 and 37 south. Traffic's starting to pick up just a little bit, but uh, still looking good. And 10 and Frio inbounds and outbounds looks a little heavy for this time of day. So, uh, like I said, holidays really starting to affect the traffic in other ways. Well, uh, I'll keep you updated on any other accidents that come out this morning, and I hope everyone's having a great morning. Leslie? Thank you very much, Nick. Well, the day is starting with a death on the city's east side. Police say a man was shot and killed during an argument with someone he knew. Katrina Weber's live where it happened, which is the 2700 block of East Commerce. And you mentioned that police have made an arrest. Have they determined what was at the center of this dispute? Well, that's one thing they're still trying to figure out. And we have homicide detectives here now. They arrived within the last half hour. They're focusing on an apartment here, again, in the 2700 block of East Commerce. They've been here since about 3 o'clock this morning. That's when police got the call anyway. Uh, they say that they were told that there were two men inside this apartment. They got into some sort of an argument, and then one shot the other. 
The man who was killed is in his early 30s. The suspect they caught at another location, they say he's in his early 20s. Now, neither one of them lives in this apartment. This is the home of a woman. Just a few minutes ago, I spoke to another woman who says that that is her daughter's apartment. She told me that this had to do uh, with the daughter, that these two men, uh, one was the ex-boyfriend and the other a current interest, but uh, we don't know that for sure. We have to verify that with police, but that is what a relative is telling us nonetheless, uh, that this had to do with the woman. Uh, we are going to see if we can get police to tell us a little bit more about that as they continue their investigation here. Reporting live on the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Well, the death toll from New Zealand's White Island volcano eruption earlier this month has risen to 17. This comes after another person died Sunday. Police say the latest victim passed away at Middlemore Hospital in Auckland, New Zealand. 16 victims of the eruption have died in New Zealand, and one person died after being transferred to Australia. White Island erupted December 9th while 47 people were visiting the volcano. The active volcano off the east coast of the country's North Island had become a popular tourist destination in recent years, receiving more than 10,000 visitors annually. The impeachment process is on pause and will likely remain so until the start of the new year. In the meantime, both sides aren't showing much holiday spirit toward each other. CNN's John Lawrence reports. President Trump at a weekend event in Florida blasting the House for impeaching him. They are violating the Constitution totally. totally. They're violating the Constitution. The matter's at a stalemate for now since House Speaker Nancy Pelosi hasn't sent the articles of impeachment to the Republican-led Senate. Crazy Nancy. She's crazy. It's so unfair. She has no case. But newly released government documents show the White House's budget office ordered the Pentagon to freeze security funding for Ukraine less than two hours after President Trump ended his phone call with Ukrainian President Zelensky in July. Until we hear from the witnesses, until we get the documents, the American people will correctly assume that those blocking their testimony were aiding and abetting a cover-up. Pelosi wants Majority Leader Mitch McConnell and Minority Leader Chuck Schumer to agree to rules for the Senate trial. One White House official thinks Pelosi will eventually give in. She will yield. There's no way she can hold this position. Until there's movement on one side or the other, the president and the rest of the world will have to wait to see what happens next. President Trump, release the emails. Let the witnesses testify. What are you afraid of? I'm John Lawrence reporting. Millions of people will likely be traveling to their holiday destinations today, and in many parts of the country, the weather is not going to cooperate. Heavy rain is expected to drench parts of California, snow forecast for higher elevations, and a storm system moving along the Gulf Coast is expected to bring heavy rains and strong winds to much of the southeast. By now it's 537, 37 degrees. The year is winding down, and that means it's time to tie up some loose ends, what you need to add to your end-of-the-year financial to-do list. Also on our to-do list here on GMSA, get an updated holiday forecast as we head into Christmas. Yes, ma'am. I would like to give a shout out real quick to one of our viewers, Vicki Smedley, her little man as she calls him, her grandson, six-year-old Justin. It's his birthday today. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Good morning, welcome back. More on consumer news. We have a recall alert for you now. Hallmark recalling a line of its scented candles because of fire and laceration concerns. The recall involves more than 4,000 of the balsam soy blend jar candles. According to the Consumer Product Safety Commission, when the candles are lit, the glass jar can break, causing possible cuts and fire hazards. No injuries have been reported, but Hallmark has received six reports of the glass jar breaking, resulting in fire damage to nearby items. Ford's recalling more than 600,000 cars to fix a hydro hydraulic defect that could lead to crashes. Recall affects certain versions of the Ford Fusion, Mercury Milan, and Lincoln MKZ. The vehicles are all made between February of 06 through July of 2009. Ford's identified at least 15 accidents that may have occurred because of the defect. Those crashes cost at least two injuries. The automaker says its dealers will inspect the vehicle's hydraulic control units for signs of malfunctioning valves and will replace the units if necessary. As the end of the year approaches, there are a couple of end of the year financial tasks to add to your to-do list. First, max out those contributions to accounts like IRAs, 401ks, 529 college savings accounts, and health savings accounts. Number two, use the money you've put aside in your flexible spending account. 
Among the things you can do with those funds, pre-order prescriptions you'll need in the new year, or look into which over-the-counter items you can buy, such as personal care items and non-prescription medications. For the seventh year in a row, Kohl's is offering 24-hour shopping leading up to Christmas. Most locations will be open until 6 p.m. Christmas Eve to help all those last-minute shoppers cross everything off their lists. Pringles is releasing a chip inspired by the adult swim cartoon Rick and Morty. The flavor is called Pickle Rick. It's named after the vegetable reincarnation of the character Rick Sanchez, a wacky scientist who turns himself into a talking pickle. Interesting. Adult Swim will create an animated commercial for the new chip, and it will air during the Super Bowl. The special edition chips will then be available in grocery stores nationwide in early February. Now, the new chip's flavor profile is a mystery. Think pickle, right? Because it has pickle in the name. Mm -hmm. But Pringles already has a pickle-flavored chip. So we're a little scared. We have no idea what's in them. We have no idea what's in them. 542, 37 degrees. Dallas Cowboys close to clinching the number one spot in the NFC East. How the team fell to the Philadelphia Eagles after the break. This SA Salute Holiday Greeting is brought to you by Broadway Bank. Hi, my name is Staff Sergeant Garman. I'm deployed here at IUD Air Base Qatar. I would like to say happy holidays to my wife, Nishe Garman, back in San Antonio, Texas. I love to be there with you, honey, but unfortunately, I am not able to. But other than that, I love you. Peace out. Happy holidays. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The Dallas Cowboys blew their chance to win the NFC East after losing to Philadelphia Sunday. Dallas's Dak Prescott played through an injured shoulder and threw for 265 yards, but his final pass attempt at the game was busted up in the end zone by Eagles cornerback Sidney Jones. With that, the Cowboys fell to Philadelphia 17-9 Sunday. This was the second game of the season where the Cowboys failed to score a single touchdown. Cowboys now second in the NFC East standings. They'll take on Washington Redskins on Sunday afternoon, kickoff 325 in Arlington. Houston Texans had a good weekend. The Texans are now AFC South champions for the fourth time in five years. They clinched the division by beating the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 23 to 20 on Saturday. Texans offense faced the number one rush defense in the league and managed only 68 yards on the ground, but still scored a touchdown. The 10 and 5 Texans won despite a shaky performance from Deshaun Watson, who completed only 19 of 32 passes for 184 yards and one interception. I mean, it's cool. I mean, every stadium, regardless of where we would have played at, it would have been awesome to take over and uh, win the South. But, you know, definitely, uh, you know, a good feeling to be back here. And kind of reminisce pregame, but, you know, get back focused and, you know, try to win another championship. Coming to the locker room, man, shoot, AFC champs again. You know what I mean? Five years out of six years, second year in a row for me. It feels good. You know what I mean? I feel great right now. I'm super happy. But then at, that, at the same time, it's like I've been here last year. You know what I mean? I'm ready. I'm ready for that next step. For Jameis. Texas defense and special teams had a really great day. They had a blocked field goal for the second week in a row and forced a fumble. And they picked off Bucks quarterback Jameis Winston four times. Texans play the Tennessee Titans Sunday afternoon at 325 in Houston. It's game day for our Spurs. The Silver and Black back in action tonight, taking on the Memphis Grizzlies. Tip-off set for 7 o'clock in Tennessee. Spurs head to Dallas to face off with the Mavs on Thursday. Spurs back home for game Saturday against the Detroit Pistons. We say we check the roadway. We could do that at 547. Nick, how's it looking out there? Things are definitely starting to pick up, Mark and Leslie. Uh, a lot of traffic out there, um, or moderate traffic out there in the roadways. So just be careful if you're heading out right now. Traffic's a little bit more heavy than usual, probably because of the holiday season. Um, eastbound I-10 from FM 40, 46 to 1604, 37 minutes. And eastbound north, on the northwest side, 1604 to I-35, 13 minutes. So that's pretty good there. Let's take a look at some trans guide now. Callahan at 410, looking great. Uh, I tend at Frio inbound and the outbound traffic uh, is uh, which is usually a lot less for this time of morning is a little bit more heavier today. Uh, US 281 and Hildebrand is looking amazing and 37 and Hackberry within the southeast side uh, traffic starting to pick up there too. But, well, I hope everyone uh, drives safely to their destination if they are doing some holiday traveling today. So here's my theory on this early morning traffic because it has been heavier than usual. Kind of like uh, last week. I think there are folks trying to get a jump start on one final work day mm -hmm. before Christmas or they are definitely heading out of town 
for the holidays. Near or far? Well, probably around 2 o'clock this afternoon, those who did go to work, a lot of people are like sneak out early. Oh, yeah. Be very patient. Don't be yeah. on the roadways. Oh, you don't want to be... get in an, accident, in an accident. Yeah, it oh, could be dear. bumper to bumper by like 3 o'clock this afternoon. That yeah. is great advice. We drove everywhere when I was younger mm -hmm. to get to our Christmas mm -hmm. de uh, destinations, and we left at the crack of dawn. I remember that, morning. too. Yeah. yeah. We had the station yeah. wagon, and it was back before you had to wear seat belts, right? Mm -hmm. And they would put us with blankets and pillows in the back of the station wagon right. and let us sleep. It was some of the best sleeps. Yep, it was. <laughs> so they were really were. But on the airlines today, there will be some delays, no doubt, just because of how busy it is. But the weather's not really going to help. It, in fact, it could make it a little bit more complicated. We'll take a look at airport delays right now. Again, I don't think we're going to see much just because it's early in the morning. But I did want to show you uh, the system that's uh, making its way across the Gulf Coast states at the moment, bringing a lot of rain to Florida, Georgia, the Carolinas, and Tennessee. Again, not really seeing any delays at the moment around the nation at the big major airports, but that could change from just the next couple of minutes. So we'll keep an eye on that. Again, locally around the state of Texas, all of the regional airports doing just fine uh, this morning. Now, the moon is actually rising just at the start of the half hour. It was right in the middle of the screen, and you can see it right there. Moonrise shortly before the sunrise. 37 outside right now. It is cold. We've got winds from the west northwest at about 5 to 10 miles per hour, giving us a wind chill. Feels like it's freezing in San Antonio. Notice that the dew points are awfully close to freezing in San Antonio. Dew points and and some temperatures are below freezing northwest of San Antonio. Look up toward Bolverde. It's 30 degrees there. 30 at Bernie Stage, 32 at Rio Medina, 31 in Kerrville, 28 in Comfort. I wouldn't be surprised if, again, there are some areas of patchy light frost in some places, especially in the higher elevations uh, around San Antonio and the nooks and crannies around Bear County. 33 down at Stinson. Uh, Visibility is okay. We're not really dealing with much fog. There could be some patchy fog in the valleys around San Antonio, but generally we should be fine, especially the last couple mornings we've had fog. Today, this morning, we're a lot clearer, and that's going to help our temperatures really soar by the afternoon. We'll be near 70 degrees just about everywhere you look, from Temperwood Park down to Lotus, out toward Lackland, over toward Castroville, Randolph, uh, JBSA Randolph, and up toward Seguin, all of us near 70 degrees, and then temperatures will cool down very quickly this evening. By the start of the day tomorrow, we'll wake up right around 39. So let's break it down for you. Uh, uh, we're cold right now, but we'll still be chilly right around 10 when temperatures will be up into the 50s, 60s by the lunch hour, 70 in the afternoon, sunny and comfortable today with light and variable wind, and then we'll cool down very quickly tonight. So if you do have Monday evening plans, if you're wanting to go out and look at lights, make sure to bring the jacket with you. Also, it's, it's okay. It's fireplace weather in the evening hours. You can have an excuse to turn on that fireplace if you really want an excuse. It's going to be chilly this evening and chilly by tomorrow morning. Let's take you through your holiday travel forecast. Again, if you're driving across the state of Texas, it's going to be mild and sunny Christmas Eve through Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, so you should be okay on the roadways other than just the sheer amount of traffic from people traveling. And it'll be chilly in the northeastern section of the United States. There's going to be a big system that's going to bring some snow across the Rockies, the higher elevations, and some heavy rain out toward California. So again, I do think delays uh, at the airports are going to be high, not only because of travel but also because uh, of the unfortunate uh, two systems that are moving through that are creating some headaches as far as weather goes. For us in San Antonio, this is what it looks like if you're staying here. Uh, tomorrow morning, we'll wake up at 39, a high right around 72, tons of sunshine tomorrow. Overnight Christmas Eve into Christmas Day, we're going to see some fog develop, okay? And that's going to allow our temperatures to be a little bit warmer as we start the day, a little bit more moisture. We'll still be chilly at 45 on Christmas morning morning. So again, wear those PJs to open those presents. It should be just fine. 72 though in the afternoon. So if you wanted to enjoy your Christmas dinner, even outside, if you're having an early dinner, that would be nice. Morning fog and comfortable Christmas day. Wednesday will have some areas of uh, fog in the morning, but we should clear up in the afternoon. Then Things start to shift a little bit for us. We'll get a little bit more moisture. We'll have morning drizzle on Thursday and then by the weekend, more cloud cover and isolated rain is going to be possible. It's a messy forecast on the weekend, so we'll be able to refine that as we get closer to the weekend. I'm hoping we can get some decent rain. We need it, but for now, the rain chances are, are looking pretty slim, isolated at best, uh, but of course, we'll have more information for you. So not too shabby of a Christmas forecast. Nothing too out of the ordinary. It looks fabulous. It's going to be beautiful outside. Thanks.
Right now it's 553, 37 degrees. Let's take a look at your lottery numbers once again as we head to break. Or maybe not. Maybe we're just going to break. I just we, want to see the lottery numbers. We can do whatever you guys want. Okay, there we are. ask that you shall receive finally. Okay, pick three, one, seven, two, with a fireball of four. Daily four, two, three, five, nine, with a fireball of zero. Cash five, three, nine, 10, 23, 24. Lotto, Texas, seven, 21, 24, 37, 44, 45. And Powerball, let's zip through these. 19, 31, 35, 50, 67, Powerball, 14, power play, two. Ready for this? Happy Festivus. It's the non-commercial holiday celebration made popular by an episode of Seinfeld. The holiday's tagline, a Festivus for the rest of us. Instead of a Christmas tree, there's an unadorned aluminum Festivus pole. Festivus starts with a dinner followed by an airing of grievances in which family and friends tell each other how they disappointed them during the year. <laughs> and then there's the feats of strength, namely wrestling. Festivus is not over until the head of household is formally pinned to the ground. Awesome. A little less than three minutes till six right now. 37 degrees. This morning we're talking about loneliness in seniors just ahead. The toll it can take on them physically and mentally. And coming up on GMSA, a full look at your holiday forecast and traffic with Officer Nick Solis. Stand by, we're gonna start the show, we promise. <laughs> A sharper timeline is emerging surrounding the aid to Ukraine as new emails have been released. I'm ABC's Serena Marshall with what happened just 90 minutes after the phone call between the two presidents. Loneliness has become an epidemic just ahead on GMSA, how it's impacting seniors' health and what's being done about it. Yeah, I told you we'd start. There's a live <laughs> cam right now looking back towards downtown. Monday forecast is coming up with meteorologist it's Sarah Spivey. On Monday. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. We just had it wrapped up like a gift and we wanted you to do a slow unwrap. Good morning, it is Monday, December 23rd. Yes, that was uh, something, wasn't it? Thanks for being with us this morning, everybody. Mike is on vacation, but we have the beautiful Sarah Spivey in this morning and it's chilly out there. Oh my goodness, yes it is. It's been chilly pretty much all weekend long in the morning hours. Temperatures are starting off right now close to freezing. We are flirting with that freezing line. You take a look though up toward Bernie Stage Airfield right on the Kendall Bear County line. It's 30 degrees. It's 28 up in Kerrville, 31 in Hondo and 31 below freezing down in Pleasanton. But again, right around San Antonio, we're just above freezing. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot like yesterday morning we have areas of patchy frost out there. So we do have a bit of a frosty morning this afternoon noon is going to be absolutely beautiful and we will have a warm Christmas at least in the afternoons but I'll be back to take a look at travel delays I'll be back to take a look at your Christmas forecast and what you can expect and of course what you can expect today a lot of people will be out on the roads not only traveling but also getting those last minute Christmas presents in line so with that let's go ahead and go over to officer Nick he's got a look at the roads with time saver traffic Thank you, Sarah. A lot of things, not, not a lot of things going on right now on the traffic roadways. Everything's looking great. Early in the morning, traffic was a little bit more moderate than usual, probably because of the holiday season, but it's definitely starting to pick up because it's a six o'clock, the six o'clock hour now, but everything's looking good out there. Let's look at some drive time. Southbound 1604 to downtown is 12 minutes and the southeast side of 1604 to downtown is also 12 minutes. Here we have eastbound Bandera to I-10, five minutes and westbound Bandera Road to Highway 51 is five minutes. So if you're out there today, just please be very, very careful. Let's take a look at the Trans Guide. Alma Ranch, 16 and Calabria, uh, looking good. 10 and Callahan, looking great as well. And let's see what else we have here. Let's do 10 and 16 4 so all northwest side. Sorry about that. I, uh, it's right there. Everything's looking good. 410 and Callahan, traffic's starting to pick up as well. So please be careful if you're on the roadways today. And uh, have a great day, Mark. Thank you, Nick. Homicide detectives questioning several people after a deadly shooting at an east side apartment. W only one of them is a suspect, the person who they believe shot and killed a man overnight. Katrina Weber is at the 2700 block of East Commerce with a live report. Katrina, you mentioned that neither man lived there. Have police found out why they were in that particular apartment? 
Well, the only thing that police have shared with us is that those two men were there for the purpose of visiting with a woman who lives there. Now, I spoke to another woman who claimed to be that woman's mother, and she says there's there's pretty much a lot to the story, a lot more than police have shared with us. Let me tell you what they did tell us, though. They say that the shooting happened in an apartment right here in the 2700 block of East Commerce a little bit before 3 o'clock this morning. They were called here. They did find a man in his early 30s who had been shot several times, according to police, shot and killed. The suspect was not here, but they did track him down at another location. They took that man who's in his early 20s into custody. Now, the woman who we spoke to say, says that uh, those two men were there to see her daughter. She says, though, she's not sure exactly how the victim got in. She says he is the ex-boyfriend of her daughter. For some reason, he came over. She was there with a friend of hers, and those two men got into it, and then that is when the shooting happened. Uh, and so police have been talking to her. We actually saw detectives talking to the mother, and uh, they have not confirmed that to us, but that is the story that we have heard here from the mother of the woman who lives in this apartment. We are going to try to see what police, what more police can tell us about this situation. Reporting live on the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Also new this morning in southeast Bear County, investigators are trying to figure out what sparked a house fire early this morning. It happened just before 2 this morning in the 4800 block of Hardy Road. That's near Mathis Road and I-37. We are told a home and car were on fire. Three people were inside the home, but they did get out safely. They will now be staying with relatives. And deputies for a shooter after an argument over a child's haircut ended with gunfire at a barbershop. Happened Saturday near Katy. The Harris County Sheriff's Office says the suspect left the barbershop in a gray four-door sedan. The employee who was shot three times was rushed to an area hospital. New this morning in Saudi Arabia, court has sentenced five people to death for the killing of journalist Jamal Khashoggi. Saudi Arabia's state-run news reported three others were sentenced to prison for a combined 24 years. And all 11 people were on trial for the killing. Khashoggi was killed last year in the Saudi consulate in Istanbul. He was a Saudi journalist and critical of Saudi Arabia and the Crown Prince's policies. Now to the latest in the impeachment of President Donald Trump, newly released documents revealed that just 90 minutes after that infamous phone call with Ukraine, the Pentagon was ordered to suspend military aid and to keep the move quiet. The documents were released following a court order as part of a Freedom of Information request by the Center for Public Integrity. Here's ABC's Serena Marshall. As Republicans and Democrats continue to spar over impeachment. They had to rush to uh, this impeachment vote and then all of a sudden she's sitting on it. If he really believes it's thin, it's thin because the president of the United States ordered his top people who were in the room who know have firsthand knowledge not to testify. New details from new emails filling in the timeline of events surrounding the freezing of nearly $400 million in military aid to Ukraine. Just 91 minutes after the now infamous phone call between President Trump and Ukraine's president, Michael Duffy, a senior official with the Office of Management and Budget, emailed the Pentagon to please hold off on that funding to Ukraine, requesting they keep it quiet, given the sensitive nature of the request. The 146 pages of heavily redacted emails also shows the president first inquiring about the aid weeks prior, and they were obtained by the Center for Public Integrity following a federal judge's ruling, not by Congress, which the White House continues to refuse to cooperate with. But Duffy is one of the four witnesses who Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer has said he wants to hear from during the Senate trial. This email is explosive. On the campaign trail, though, impeachment not part of the candidate's case. Mr. Vice President, can we ask you one question about it? Vice President, Mr. Vice President, one question on impeachment. Making a final pre-holiday blitz through the Hawkeye State with the caucus just weeks away, voters lining up to see the South Bend mayor. This will be the third event that I've been to. and. Um, just want to hear some more of what he has to say. As the candidates vie for their party's nomination to take on President Trump here in Washington, the impeachment battle continues to be at a standstill. Lawmakers are out on recess, and the majority and minority leader continue to be at a stalemate over witnesses. Serena Marshall, ABC News, Washington. It's now 6 8, 37 degrees. Still to come, a Connecticut school resource officer is speaking out for the first time, stopping a runaway SUV. It was heading right toward a group of students. It's coming up with your GMA First Look. Our website, the place to be for all the trending headlines after the break, a look at one of those stories about the number of hate crimes here in Texas. And taking a look outside with live cam. So happy to have you with us. Hopefully all your Christmas shopping is done and you have all the food you need for your big Christmas dinner.
Welcome back. It's 11 minutes after 6. The number of hate crimes in Texas increased by nearly 240 percent, according to recently released data from the FBI. We have a detailed look on KSAT.com right now of where those hate crimes are taking place. Erica Hernandez joins us now with details on that. So, Erica, where are most of these crimes happening? Hey, guys, good morning. Well, hate crimes have actually been reported all across the state, as you can see in this map, but the most being reported in Dallas, where 31 of those cases uh, were reported. Now, hate crimes are defined by the FBI as being a criminal offense against a person or property that is motivated by race, religion, sexual orientation, gender, and disability. New hate crime statistics show the number of cases in the state have gone up from 192 in 2017 to 457 in 2018. The type of hate crime that increased the most in the state was racially motivated. Those cases spiked from 117 in 2017 to 314 in 2018. Now, you can get a closer look in this article on KSAT.com of where those crimes are taking place. We have an interactive map included that will show you specifically which hate crimes are taking place where. For instance, in San Antonio, there were six total hate crimes in 2018. Three of those are based on race, ethnicity, and ancestry. According to police records obtained by KSAT, one of those incidents took place on the northeast side in which a black man discovered a noose tied to his mailbox. Now, this article will also include a real thorough breakdown of what we learned about those six cases here in San Antonio. You can find this article up right now on KSAT.com. Mark, Leslie. Erica, thank you. 613 right now. Time to check on the roadways once again. Nick, what's happening? Hey, Leslie, not much right now on the major roadways. Things are still looking good, but traffic's definitely picking up uh, out there. So if you're leaving uh, to work right now or for your hot holiday travels, just be very careful out there on the roadways. Uh, the traffic is starting to pick up. We have an accident here, eight, the 18500 block of Bandera Road. Now, this accident's been out there for about an hour now. It looks like it's still an active scene. So if you are heading that way, this is in the Halotus area, right near Gray Forest. So you're going down Highway 16, past Scenic Loop Road. It's right around there. So if you're coming back into the city or out of the city, just be careful with that accident. Taking a look at some drive times, the northeast side of 1604 to downtown, 12 minutes, and the southwest side of 1604 to downtown is 12 minutes as well. Let's take a look outside, southeast side of town, right there, 37 in Hackberry, looking really good. Last time I did the northwest side, so let's try to do some east side right now. 281 in Quarry's looking good. Uh, 37 in Hackberry's great. Uh, and 10 at Proband. Traffic's definitely starting to pick up there. So just be very careful if you're on the roadways right now. And I hope everybody has a great Monday morning. And you as well, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. All right, so it's cool in the mornings, but we're going to have a nice warm up today. There's plenty of sunshine. We are going to have a beautiful day today. We'll be near 70 degrees in the afternoon, but don't be surprised if you walk outside this morning and you see some frost, especially if you live in the higher elevations around San Antonio. I think it's possible. I saw some frost on rooftops yesterday morning, too. That makes it feel Christmassy. It makes it feel really Christmassy. You know what also makes it feel Christmassy? Tracking Santa Claus. Oh, yeah. There he is. And meteorologist Katie Blake and I are going to be tracking Santa Claus all day tomorrow. Uh, and you can actually go online. This is our KSAT.com page about that and follow along with us as well. Santa Tracker is going to be so much fun to this year, so make sure that you check it out. It's going to be awesome. Let's take a look at current temperatures. Uh, it is below freezing up in the Hill Country. In fact, it's 28 degrees right now in Kerrville, 28 in Comfort. You look out toward Bolverde, still below freezing, even out toward Birdie Stage Airfield. It, it's below freezing as well, so I wouldn't be surprised if areas like Leon Springs, even up near the Stone Oak area closer to Bulverde, uh, waking up with a little bit of frost with those temperatures right below freezing and the dew points right at freezing as well. 32 Rio Medina, 31 in Hondo, and it's below freezing in Tarpley at 27. Notice how close we are to the freezing line down at Stinson. 35 at JBSA Randolph, 37 the official temperature at San Antonio which is taken at the airport, by the way. 32 in Carrizo Springs. You zoom out a little bit more. It's still cold just about everywhere you look. It's in the 40s, though, however, near Houston. 43 near Corpus Christi as well. We're going to see some cirrus clouds work their way into San Antonio today. So the sky will have a milky hue to it. But the big, real rainmaker across the nation right now is out across the eastern Mississippi River Valley, where that low pressure system is. A lot of rainfall, though, for the Carolinas. A lot of rain for Atlanta, Georgia, near Orlando as well. So if you have family and friends near Disney World for the Christmas holiday, they're going to experience a little bit of rain. But we're on the dry side of the system, getting that drier air in 
place. And so if you are traveling by road across the state of Texas, it's looking great as far as the weather goes. Here's a look at your Texas travel cast up I-35 north toward Dallas, 65 in Dallas today, out toward I-10 east toward Houston, about near 70 degrees with tons of sunshine. And down south uh, I-35 toward Laredo, it's going to be about uh, 76, so it'll be a lot warmer. Uh, so today, at least the weather is going to cooperate for those of us who are traveling by uh, the road, but know that the traffic is going to be a bit of a headache. For us in San Antonio, we're cold this morning, temperatures in the 30s and 40s, but even by 10, we'll warm up nicely. 54 degrees, still going to be cool. In the afternoon, we'll start to get closer to 70 for the high. That's where we're going to go, near 70 degrees. And then tonight, things are going to cool down pretty quickly for us. So tonight, if you do want to take a look at those, some of those Christmas lights out there, make sure to bring the coat with you. We're going to have clear skies and so light winds and that's going to allow temperatures to cool down. We'll be in the 40s by about 10 o'clock, uh, so it is going to be a chilly evening. Great for lighting the fireplace as well if you want to. And then Christmas, let's go ahead and talk about that. Tomorrow is Christmas Eve, 39 in the morning. It's going to be chilly, 72 in the afternoon, so it'll feel great. Mostly sunny skies. This is kind of fitting Christmas Eve into Christmas morning. We're going to have areas of patchy fog develop that song about Rudolph one foggy Christmas Eve. Santa came to say so Rudolph is going to actually come to good use from Christmas morning and <laughs> morning fog comfortable in the afternoon. Wednesday we'll be looking at uh, that morning fog sticking around a while. So I do think that the first part of the day on Christmas is going to be pretty cloudy. Second part of the day should be nice and sunny and we'll warm up to 52. Then the humidity starts to work its way back into the forecast. We'll have areas of clouds uh, and morning drizzle on Thursday, isolated rain by Saturday and Sunday. I do think so far the best chance for rain is going to be Saturday and Sunday. It is on the weekend, but we've had beautiful weekends the last couple of weekends and we desperately need the rain. We're still under drought conditions, so it would be great if we can get some of that rainfall. That would be a Christmas present, at least to me, if Mother Nature could give us a little bit of rain. But for now, enjoy a beautiful and mild Christmas. It's going to be perfect. It is going to be very nice. Thank you very much. Just about 619, 37 degrees. Just ahead, millions of Twitter users might want to take some action to keep their accounts secure. We have details on that coming up in your consumer news. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it right now on KZ.com for your chance to win a $25 gift card from We Are Circle K. Mucinex, cold and flu, all in one. Fight. Oh, no, 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 no. Sore throat, fever, cough, sinus pressure, chest congestion, sinus congestion, measles and body pain, all in one. Did you really need the caps lock? Mucinex, cold and flu, all in one. With employee pricing for all, the greatest gifts aren't found in a store. They're out there, gift wrapped in snow. So what are you waiting for? Get out there and open them. Unwrap the world in a Jeep SUV with employee pricing for all. With employee pricing for all, purchasing at 3,906 below MSRP plus 750 Chrysler Capital bonus cash on select 2020 Jeep Compass models and dealer stock. Well, my rough and bumpy skin is on the back of my arms. Nothing I've ever tried worked. Gold Bond Rough and Bumpy Skin Therapy exfoliates, smooths, softens, reduces bumps 74%. I have nice, smooth skin because of Gold Bond. Ultimate lotion, ultimate skin. In this morning's GMA First Look, a police officer from Connecticut is being hailed a hero after single-handedly stopping a moving SUV from colliding with a group of teenagers. Watch as Officer Carlos Carmo Jr. notices the driverless car with two people still inside and sprints toward the moving vehicle. You can see him grab hold of the truck and bring it to a halt by dragging his feet on the street. That brave officer spoke exclusively to ABC News about the harrowing incident. I was just thinking in my mind, just like, I, I got to find a way to stop this. Watch again. You can see dozens of young people on the sidewalk unaware they were in harm's way. They all had headphones on and I was screaming at them. They basically didn't even didn't even hear me. I don't even think they knew what was going on until it was over. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have exclusive details from that brave police officer. With your GMA First Look, I'm Lindsay Davis, ABC News, New York. Now to Twitter security. If you use Twitter's Android app, you should update to the latest version. 
Twitter confirmed a vulnerability that could let hackers see users' account info and actually send tweets. The company says it's been fixed, but suggests users do that update. Motorola is delaying the release of its new Razer phone. It was supposed to be available for pre-order the day after Christmas and launched next month, but that's reportedly being delayed because of high demand. Motorola says the delay, though, will not be significant. And is Alexa replacing Santa? There are plenty of reports of gifts arriving at home thanks to kids ordering them through voice assistants <laughs> or other devices. To guard against unwanted purchases through Alexa, parents can turn, or rather set a pen or turn off voice purchasing from Amazon. Can you imagine for kids, they're like, it's like magic. I just say it and it shows and up. And it at shows the house. up, I know. <laughs> so funny. Well, chronic loneliness is a growing problem. It can be as harmful for seniors as smoking 15 cigarettes a day and can lead to a higher rate of chronic disease, depression, rather depression, dementia, and even death. But all of that can be combated with a little bit of caring, sharing, and love. Our Erica Hernandez has details. <laughs> This pound class is saving lives. I went days without seeing people. Um, I mostly talk to a cat. So I have issues with my memory. Like one in three seniors, most of these people at the Seniors Resource Center had little to look forward to. Just sitting around, getting older. <laughs> but that type of isolation can really have an impact. So many people who just don't have that human connection. And loneliness not only impacts a person's mental well-being, but their physical health. Stress hormones go up, it can impair cognitive performance, compromise the immune system, and increase the risk for vascular problems, inflammation, and heart disease. But a little connection can change all that. It's 15 minutes. And it's, it is face to face. That means if you know someone who is lonely, talk to them. More importantly, listen to them. Being able to validate and say that they are valued. Plan at least two days, if only for a few hours. Out of the house, find a senior center, enroll in community college classes. Most offer courses free for seniors. Volunteer, walk places if you can, and say hello to everyone you pass. Make it a point to call someone each day. God knows it has just done so much for me. Communities around the world are taking steps to combat loneliness. Towns in England have installed chat benches. If you need to talk, just stop and take a break and start a conversation. And in Africa, they have friendship benches where grandmothers are being trained by health professionals to sit and talk to help anyone who needs it. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Your time now, 626, 37 degrees outside. Here's a look at what's coming up in our next half hour. San Antonio police say two men worked out their differences in a deadly way. One shot the other. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you what one woman says was at the center of that. If you're just now waking, well, let's take a look at traffic. And believe it or not, to, well, you may not be completely surprised, but we have... <laughs> Traffic that's been heavier earlier this morning. There's 1604 at House, and we'll check in with Nick. And taking a look outside with live cam, it's going to be a beautiful sunrise today. Sarah Spivey's in with your forecast, and don't forget the coat. It is Monday. It is December 23rd. Thanks for being with us this morning. We have seen a lot of cars loaded down with stuff. Yeah, like Mark was saying, er the earlier it was more traffic. That's different, uh, definitely. But we are starting to see some major accidents. We have one on Wurzbach. We have one on 151 and 410. And we have another one here we're going to talk about off Bandera. Uh -oh. Okay, Highway 16, a little further outside, 1604. Yes, yes. Hello, right. this area. Thank you, Nick. So a little bit of frost in some places. Yeah, perhaps. some frost this morning, uh, especially on the rooftops, probably, and out in the hill country. Mm -hmm. So if you do have frost, snap a pic and send it to me. I'd love to be able to show it on air. Uh, we're looking outside right now with temperatures in the 30s. It's 37 degrees uh, out uh, at San Antonio International Airport, and we're looking at a dew point right around 33 degrees. It's uh, winds are from the northwest at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. And taking a look at temperatures uh, locally, you can see where the freezing lines are right now from Bolverde down to Birdie Stage out toward Rio Medina and areas up to the north and to the west. Uh, we've got Bandera at 29 degrees right now, Kerrville at 29 and Tarpley at 27. Again, up in the hill country northwest of the city center, that's where I do think that we could see some areas of frost. 
frost this morning. Winds are from the north at about five to 10 miles per hour. And so because of that, there is a bit of a wind chill out there. It feels like it's in the 20s, feels like it's near 32 freezing here at San Antonio. So it is cold bundle up this morning, but by the afternoon you will not need the jacket. Look at these temperatures, how nicely they're going to rebound 52 by 10, 65 by noon, 70 in the afternoon with a light and variable wind and then we'll cool down quickly again tonight. It's going to be gorgeous for Christmas Eve and Christmas a day, just definitely not on the cold side. So I've got to look at that forecast. I've also got to look at travel forecast coming up for you. A lot of people traveling. Speaking of traveling, let's go ahead and check in with time saver traffic with Officer Nick. You were saying that there were a lot more accidents out there. Yes, in the last like 10 minutes, we just got like two or three major accidents out of okay. nowhere. Typical for 630 on a Monday, right? right. OK, well, we right here we have a lot of green, but we do have an accident that just came out 410 and 151. Uh, looks like if you're going on 410, you're going towards uh, or 151 and you're going northbound right before that 410 intersection. We have a major accident that just came out there. A vehicle is blocking the lane. Be, be careful if you're heading that way. There's another accident I want to talk about. However, it's here on the 18, the 18500 block of Bandera Road, technically in Halotus, just past Scenic Loop Road. We have a major accident that just came out and it looks like it may be a fatality accident there. It's a one vehicle accident um, and uh, it's there at the scene It possibly a fatality. So just be very careful. Expect major traffic delays as that is still an active scene there in the Halotus area. Uh, uh, it looks like Bear County and Halotus uh, officers are still there um, conducting an investigation. But right now it does look like this is a fatality accident and just be very careful if you're heading that way going in the city. Mark Leslie back to you. Thank you very much, Nick. Developing now is a deadly start to the day for San Antonio police. They're investigating an overnight shooting in an east side apartment. Katrina Weber has a live report from the 2700 block of East Commerce. So Katrina, what have you found out about the suspected shooter? Well, he is in custody. Uh, he's someone who's in his early 20s, and police tell us he is also someone who knew the man he's accused of killing. Now, both of them know the woman who lives in the apartment where it happened. It's just right back here in the 2700 block of East Commerce. Let me show you the video from earlier. They've been here since about 3 o'clock this morning, and that's when police got the call. They say they did find that man who's in his early 30s. He'd been shot several times inside that apartment. Uh, they did not tell us exactly what transpired between the two men that led to the shooting, but they did say that both of them were there to see the woman who lives in that apartment. Now, just a while ago, I mentioned we had spoken to another woman who says the woman who lives in the apartment is her daughter. She claimed that the man who was killed is her, is her daughter's ex-boyfriend. Somehow he got inside her house overnight. She had been out with this other friend of hers. They returned home and then the two men got into it. And that is what led to the shooting, according to the mother of the woman involved. Now, uh, police have not told us any of that, but they did spend some time talking to the mother. And uh, so they are still investigating that. They say they also plan to question that suspect who they do have in custody. He was arrested at another location. Reporting live on the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. The impeachment process is on pause and will likely remain so until the start of the new year. In the meantime, both sides aren't showing much holiday spirit toward each other. Seen as John Lawrence reports. President Trump at a weekend event in Florida blasting the House for impeaching him. They are violating the Constitution totally. totally. They're violating the Constitution. The matter's at a stalemate for now since House Speaker Nancy Pelosi hasn't sent the articles of impeachment to the Republican-led Senate. Crazy Nancy. She's crazy. It's so unfair. She has no case. But newly released government documents show the White House's budget office ordered the Pentagon to freeze security funding for Ukraine less than two hours after President Trump ended his phone call with Ukrainian President Zelensky in July. Until we hear from the witnesses, until we get the documents, the American people will correctly assume that those blocking their testimony were aiding and abetting a cover-up. Pelosi wants Majority Leader Mitch McConnell and Minority Leader Chuck Schumer to agree to rules for the Senate trial. One White House official thinks Pelosi will eventually give in. She will yield. There's no way she can hold this position. Until there's movement on one side or the other, the president and the rest of the world will have to wait to see what happens next. President Trump, release the emails. 
Let the witnesses testify. What are you afraid of? I'm John Lawrence reporting. Happening today, millions of people will likely be traveling to their holiday destinations. In many parts of the country, the weather is not going to cooperate. Heavy rainfall is expected to drench parts of California with snow forecasts for the higher elevations. And a storm system moving along the Gulf Coast is expected to bring heavy rain and high wind to much of the southeast. Well, if you haven't already shipped those holiday gifts to friends and family, you're cutting it pretty close. The United States Postal Service says today is the deadline if you want to be certain the packages are under the tree by Christmas. However, you will have to choose the post office's Priority Mail Express Service, and that's been 7. 637, 37 degrees. Still looking for ways to get in the Christmas spirit after the break where you can have some holiday fun with the whole family. This SA Salute Holiday Greeting is brought to you by Broadway Bank. Hi, I'm Scott Caballero, U.S. Army veteran. And from all of us here at Broadway Bank, we'd like to send out a special thank you for all of our troops. Happy holidays, Feliz Navidad, and have a safe and happy new year. 641, looking for something to do right before Christmas or on New Year's Eve. We've got you covered. Erica Hernandez is back in the studio with a look at all of the holiday fun that you can find on KSAT.com. Good morning, Hi. Erica. Hi, good morning. Hi. Have y'all had some holiday fun already? Oh, my oh, gosh, yeah. yes. I've got family in, and it's already too much fun. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we have a full list of other things going on as well. Let's start first with Christmas lights. Did you know there are about 20 places in our area where you can see some great Christmas light displays? From the zoo to SeaWorld, you can see amazing Christmas lights. We have the whole list of places up, including a map. Some places you may have not heard about are Elf Acres, Santa's Ranch in New Braunfels, Natural Bridge Caverns also has a great display, as well as Lights Alive, which is the newest drive through light display on the far northwest side. We also have a list of everything going on around town this month. As for today, Trans-Siberian Orchestra is at the AT&T Center, a Charlie Brown Christmas is at the Magic Theater, and the Pearl this evening will feature a Chanukah and Menorah lighting celebration. There will be live music and kosher food served. The event is free and open to the public. And finally, we can't forget about New Year's Eve. We'll soon be celebrating the Roaring 2020s. We have a full list of events. Just along the Riverwalk, there will be 13 events that include dining, dancing, and other activities. As far as family-friendly, Celebrate SA will take place at Hemisphere, and the Charity Bar will host a specific event geared toward the kiddos. There will even be a 9 p.m. ball drop for kids who need to go to bed early. All that more and holiday fun can be found on ksat.com. Mark Leslie. Lots of fun times coming up. Thank you, Erica. 642 on your Monday morning. It's busy on the roadways this morning, Nick. Yeah, Leslie, it just got really busy in the last 20 minutes or so. We have a number of accidents that just came out. Um, I'm not seeing it on the maps. We also had an accident on Wiseman and it's saying 1604. Haven't seen it yet. I'll get you more information if that accident is still there. Another accident came out near the medical center, Wurzbach, uh, the 7300 block of Wurzbach Road near Babcock. So I know how Wurzbach can get backed up. Be careful if you're heading there. Expect a delay. Um, we also had a major accident northbound uh, State Highway 151 at Southwest Loop 410. That accident is still active there. So if you're heading uh, northbound at 151 right before 410, there's another accident there. But the accident we want to get to, this is a this came in as a fatality accident. It's a major accident on the 18500 block of Bandera Road near Scenic Loop Road. We have Helotus Office and Bear County deputies on scene right now. There it is, it's a one vehicle single accident. Our KSAT crew is on scene trying to get more information about and, and details about this accident, but it looks like this one is fatal, unfortunately. And uh, our KSAT crew is gonna get us more information as the morning goes on. I say, please be careful, I use our extra time. We want everyone to get to their destination safe. Yes, especially in the holiday season. Yeah. Thank you, Nick. Yeah. Sarah is here for Mike, and good to see you, Sarah. Uh, we've got great news about the forecast, especially for anybody who might get something with wheels for the holiday. Yeah, if, you, if, if Santa brings a bike, they'll be able to take it or outside. Or a convertible. Or a convertible. <laughs> mm -hmm. if That's true. If That's you're very true. lucky. Oh, thank you, Mark. I didn't know that. You're, you're welcome. This wow. year. Yeah, the <laughs> tricky thing is uh, Italian sports cars require rigorous admissions testing, so it's held up at a port right now, but I probably but said coming. too much. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah. All right. God, he's such a good work husband. Okay, you gotta <laughs> take me for a ride as well. Oh, you better right. believe it. Sounds good. It is going to be beautiful outside uh, for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. But 2004, we came this close to a white Christmas. This close to a white wow. Christmas. This is a satellite image from 
December 25th, uh, 2004. Look at all the snow that fell across south of Texas. We often don't see this where here in San Antonio, we're not seeing any snow, but then down in Victoria, nearly 13 inches of snowfall back in 2004, a Christmas miracle. Four inches near the Galveston area, four and a half near Corpus Christi. Even down in Brownsville, Texas, they got a dusting of snow on Christmas Day. We have never had a white Christmas in San Antonio since records have been taken in the 1890s. So yeah, it's not going to happen this year either. In fact, we're going to be nice and warm. Take a look at this beautiful sunrise outside right now. You can see those wispy cirrus clouds. We'll have a cotton candy sunrise here with nice shades of pinks and blues. So keep that in mind. 37 degrees outside. It is chilly with winds from the west northwest at about five miles per hour, giving us a wind chill of 32 degrees. Again, I wouldn't be surprised if we see some frost in certain places around San Antonio, especially in the higher elevations or the low lying valleys. Look out toward Bulverde. It's 30 degrees. Bernie Stage Airfield, 30 degrees. 28 in Comfort, 29 in Bandera, 28 in Tarpley. We're not really seeing any fog this morning, which is good news. The last couple of mornings have been pretty foggy, and we wouldn't have to deal with that if we're driving today. But as for the forecast, tons of sunshine. Temperatures will rebound nicely from the 30s where they're at right now to near 70 degrees in the afternoon from Bernie down to Leon Springs, out toward Lackland, down to Von Army, out toward Lavernia and to JBSA Randolph will be all near 70 degrees. And then it's going to get cold pretty fast this evening with temperatures once again in the 30s by the start of the day tomorrow. Possible uh, freeze up in the hill country early tomorrow morning. Elf on the shelf. A lot of us play a couple more days here to see where the elf is tonight. Make sure that elf has a warm place to stay because we'll be getting to the 40s pretty quickly with a light and variable wind. It'll be chilly and clear this evening. Turn on the fireplace. It's going to be a nice evening for a fireplace. As for holiday travel across the nation, really across the state of Texas is going to be beautiful, especially if all we are doing is traveling on the roads. You should be in good shape, mild and sunny across the state of Texas through tomorrow and through Christmas. But there's going to be a big system out in the west that's going to bring snow to the Rockies and uh, the Midwest west and bring heavy rain across parts of California. So Christmas Day, day after Christmas, there's probably going to be a lot of delays at the airports, not just because uh, people are going to be traveling, but also because the weather is not really going to cooperate. But the weather will be great here in San Antonio for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Tomorrow morning we'll start at 39. We'll be up to 72 in the afternoon. Chilly start, mostly sunny skies. Christmas morning we are going to have areas of fog and that fog could hang around for a bit. Uh, but I do think we'll see the sun in the afternoon. 72 once again for Christmas Day. And then as we head into the end of the week, our rain chances are slowly going to increase. Uh, we do have another system that's going to be on the way. It's going to bring cloudiness. It's going to make mornings not necessarily chilly, just cool. It's going to stay cool and cloudy during the weekend with a chance for isolated rain. We'll refine that messy forecast on the weekend, but what we do know for sure is that it's going to be nice and beautiful Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. So nice little Christmas present there from Mother Nature. Again, can you believe 2004, 13 inches of snow nearly in Victoria? I, I was in Corpus for that Christmas, and it was uh, it, it was absolutely coming down like East Coast style That's on Christmas Eve so and snowed all night. I couldn't believe it. Isn't that amazing? And then crystal clear Christmas morning and snow on the palm trees. That's just beautiful. <laughs> Wow. Well, not for us this year. Not for us this year, but good <laughs> memories there. Yeah. I'd have loved to have been there. A year to remember for certain. 648, 37 degrees. Tomorrow on GMSA, how to have a healthy holiday. We have some ways to enjoy the Christmas treats without sacrificing your waistline. I don't think it's possible. Outside with live cam as we ponder a diet we will not be following this holiday <laughs> week. Sunrise in progress. We'll be right back. You're watching GMSA. Taking one last look, sir. There was never any question that Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker's opening would dominate the box office, only by how much. It earned at least $179 million over the weekend. That's on the lower end of expectations, but the final chapter of the Skywalker saga still scored the third best December opening ever. The meaning of what I Only 6.5 million bucks for the critically savaged cats, a third of what was forecast, making it the year's final flop. 
Eddie Murphy brought back four of his classic characters when he returned to host Saturday Night Live after 35 years away. There was Mr. Robinson, Buckwheat, Velvet Jones, and a special Weekend Update guest. I am Gumby. I am Gumby. I am Gumby. <laughs> By the way, the Rise of Skywalker star Adam Driver will host the first SNL of the new year, January 25th, his third time as host. And happy birthday to Pearl Jam frontman Eddie Vedder. He's 55 today. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Christopher Watson, ABC News. Good morning. Coming up on GMA, the holiday exodus is underway. More than 100 million Americans heading out for the holidays with winter storms slamming both coasts. I will be tracking it all for you this morning, plus much more coming up only on GMA. We'll see you soon. A dispute between two men ends very differently for each of them. One is dead, the other in jail accused of killing him. It happens here in the 2700 block of East Commerce. Police say both of those men were visiting a woman who lives in that apartment back there when they got into a dispute early this morning. The man who was killed is in his early 30s. Police say he had been shot multiple times. They found the suspect at another location. He's in his early 20s. Now they say those two men got into some sort of dispute. A woman told us that that is her daughter who lives in that apartment. She says that those two men were at odds over her daughter. The one who was killed, she says, is the ex-boyfriend, the other man, just a friend of her daughter. And they came to a, it came to a deadly head early this morning. Reporting from the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Tonight, our Spurs are back in action. They're taking on the Grizzlies in Memphis. Tip-off is set for 7 o'clock. Once again, we want to check on the roadways as we approach 7 o'clock. Nick, what's happening? Too much right now, Leslie. We have a lot of major accidents. I said earlier that came out. However, we do have uh, that uh, accident on Petrenko and Wiseman I just saw right now. It's uh, going to be... Uh, uh, right between Wiseman and Petrenko came out in between. Just be careful if you're headed that way. Still working on this major accident on the 7300 block of Wurzbach Road. We also have this accident northbound State Highway 151 uh, right before Southwest Loop 410. Um, right at that interchange. Be careful if you're heading that way. And this major accident uh, near Helotus 18500 Bandera Road. That's still an active scene. Be very careful. This came out. This is a traffic related at 10 in Brazos. This looks like it's going inbound towards downtown. Uh, there's a stalled vehicle blocking the left lane. Please be very careful if you're heading that way. As you can see, an officer and a record driver are on this road right now in the main lanes. So uh, keep that in mind. It's cold this morning, 37 in San Antonio, but you look up into the hill country below freezing. 30, 28 rather in Comfort and 29 in Bandera. 31 in Kerrville. Today will be near 70 degrees and tomorrow, Christmas Eve, temperatures will be even warmer, 72. We'll have chilly mornings and comfortable afternoons through Christmas after some morning fog on Christmas morning itself. And then rain, isolated rain on the weekend. Thank you so much. I'm um, out of here for a couple weeks. I'll be back on January 6th. Happy holidays, everybody. Merry Christmas, Les. Hey. Well, Happy New Year, Les. Happy New Year. See you next year. Yeah. <laughs>